Hey guys, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. All right, today going to talk just a little bit about hypo and hyperglycemia. Uh, more focused on the hypoglycemia, and uh, just want to kind of give you just a quick overview of what to look for and some of the common differences in the two. Um, so I'm hoping you can just come away with something here during this Monday Minutes and maybe just give you a little refresher and some other things to think about. So the diabetic, right, this is, of course, the patient can't produce enough insulin, right? That's pretty much the bottom line, guys. The pancreas isn't doing it for the patient, and the patient becomes diabetic. Now, type 1 diabetes, usually you get it when you're a kid. Um, that's the most common onset. Uh, you might have it if you have some type of pancreatic disease going on or even trauma uh, to the pancreas uh, as well. And again, insulin's not the insulin is not getting produced and the patient normally takes insulin injection. Now, type 2 diabetes, this is more often though the adult onset type uh, insulin. Uh, um, onset, the patient does produce insulin, but usually it's not going to be enough for them uh, to, you know, kind of take care of the sugar coming in and all that, right? So normal, normally these patients will take those oral medications, the glucagon, um, you know, the glucophage, things like that in order to stimulate that insulin production. And if there's really, really a, a low uh, production of insulin, then those patients might end up taking insulin injections as well. So... Why is it that diabetics become an emergency, right? I mean, they're taking their pills, they're they're taking their insulin. Why should they become an emergency? Well, with a hyperglycemia, you know, this is that high blood sugar, right? Um, hyper, of course, meaning high. It's broken down for you here a little bit in the glycemia, the blood sugar. This is when the patient's got that too much sugar in the blood. They're not having enough insulin in the system to get that glucose out and into the cells. Now the hypoglycemia, this is when they have the low blood sugar and there's too much insulin in the blood and there's not enough sugar for the brain. So this is why you get those patients and their altered mental status, right? Combative, things like that. So here's just a quick uh, graph here. Um, showing some of the blood glucose levels, those when you do a finger stick, um, when the patient is going to be hyper versus hypoglycemic. Now, most glucometers probably won't read above 400, and then you can pretty much, if it reads high or something like that, you can pretty much assume, uh, based on their clinical findings and their history and all, that they might be in uh, DKA or they might be in uh, that diabetic coma right? So that's for your hyperglycemia, right? When they get really, really bad. And of course, you know, anywhere 120 to 400 in that range can be considered a hyperglycemia, but the patient might really not be all that symptomatic. And hypoglycemia, they have a list here between 80 and 40, right? Now, some patients can be down to the 60s and still be able to mentate just fine. So you got to go by your patient presentation, the patient's history, how they're presenting, mental status, vital signs, all of that. And a lot of times below 40, guys, this is when you got that insulin shock sort of scenario going on there. Um, but again, every patient's different. They don't follow charts, charts and graphs, right? So you might find once in a blue moon, you'll get a patient that will be below 40, and they'll be kind of maintaining okay for you. But you kind of get that feeling that there's something else going on, weakness, dizziness, maybe the diaphoretic, all that, right? So it's all about doing our patient assessments and, you know, our clinical findings and what the what's going on with the patient, not just something as simple as a blood glucometer level reading, right? But this is part of our diagnostic tools and it lets us sort of uh, rule things out and rule things in, okay? All right, so... A lot of times, the diabetic emergencies, and you might get signs and symptoms that are also sort of in line with acute stroke or uh, just reg other altered mental status causes, right, in addition to the diabetic emergencies. So some things you can think about 
in addition to having a diabetic issue happening, they can be drunk, they can be ETOH, you know, intoxicated, they could have epilepsy or seizures, maybe an overdose, infections, you know, septic shock, uh, psychiatric issues, overdose on those types of drugs, even an underdose can sometimes cause an altered mental status as well as certain, certain types of drugs. Uh, strokes can give you an altered mental status in their patients, and of course trauma, especially head trauma. So think about all the other things going on, right? Um, a patient might have a diabetic history, but their altered mental status might not necessarily be because of diabetes. So you've got to look at everything. Every patient is unique, okay? Just remember that, guys, please. Don't get tunnel vision because a patient's diabetic and their altered mental status that they automatically have a diabetic issue going on. Look at other causes. So, of course, we just said that the common emergencies, hypo and hyperglycemia. Hypoglycemia patient, this is that insulin shock type thing, right? Now, it's not really a shock state. It's not really a, a shock uh, classification, but they are hypoglycemic. They, be, they can be pale. They're diaphoretic. Um, and again, that altered mental status and varying states of altered mental status. There might be slight confusion to combativeness. The patient may even vomit on you. And normally, the blood glucose level, their finger stick is going to be below 80, okay? Um, and again, guys, right here on the bottom, don't assume that the hypoglycemia is the only problem. Think about why they are hypoglycemic, okay? It could be they might have stroked out and not have, eat, not have eaten, and that could be why their sugar is low. It could be that they're intoxicated, not have eaten or taken the medication, and that is why their sugar is low. All different things, guys. Think about all, everything going on on scene, what bystanders can tell you and what you find on the scene, what you can get from your patient assessment and any demographics and history and meds and all that that you can get while you're there, okay? Um, and then a treat appropriately, okay? So real quick, just a quick breakdown here um, of some of the differences between the hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. Of course, your onset for hypoglycemia is a lot shorter, right? It's usually under an hour, okay? Level of consciousness, you know, you're going to get that ultimate mental status and probably in both of them. The hyper, the hyperglycemic patient, you probably won't see ultimate mental status until they get more advanced in it, right? But both of them can present with that um, confused state. Skin, hyperglycemia is going to be warm and dry. The hypo, like we mentioned, um, is going to be diaphoretic, uh, pale, okay? Uh, pupils, Normal for hyper, usually dilated for hypo. Uh, blood pressure for a hypoglycemic patient, a little elevated, um, and normal for a hyper, okay? Now, the slightly elevated could be different for every patient too, so don't just go by the blood pressure either, right? And even with pupils, some diabetic patients, they've got, they've got eye issues, they've got cataracts, glaucoma, things like that. It might be difficult to assess uh, pupils accurately. So go by other things that are going to be presenting, okay? And respiration. Now, this is a big one, guys. Deep respirations for hyperglycemic and those rapid, shallow respirations for hypoglycemia, okay? Um, now, of course, we know treatment, guys, for hypoglycemia is going to be uh, either, you know, glucose, if they can, if they don't have a gag, if they have a gag reflex and they can actually take something, you can go ahead and give them that oral glucose. Um, on that paramedic level, a lot of times it's, it's usually the dextrose or it's the uh, glucagon IM. Of course, you're going to follow your protocols and what's available to you, where you work, what you can do, whether it's IV, IM, or oral, and of course, what level provider you are, okay? And of course, always continue to, re to assess your patients, guys. Uh, hyperglycemia, a lot of times in the field, what we're going to be doing is fluid resuscitation with these types of patients. We usually don't carry enough food on the ambulance to take care of these patients. It's a long sort of rehabilitation for them. Um, it's more about maintaining their airway, maintaining their circulation for these patients, right? That's more what you're going to be doing for those hyperglycemic patients. Um, but again, you're going to follow your protocols, what it says you can and can't do, and of course, what level provider that you are. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, real quick, office hours today. Um, I'm hoping that some of these pointers that I gave are going to help you a little bit 
when you encounter those ultimental status patients. And more importantly, I'm hoping that it's going to be able to at least sort of keep you on track that everything that looks like a stroke isn't always a stroke and everything that looks like a diabetic isn't always a diabetic. You've got so many other things in there that can be uh, present itself when you have an ultimate mental status patient. So as always, I stress to do your assessment, do your clinical, you know, your clinical assessment, your uh, verbal assessment, um, and go ahead and go by that, right? Put everything together and try to figure out what's going on with the patient. Don't get that tunnel vision because of the way the call came in or because of a specific medication that a patient might be on. Guys, you have some comments of your own, be sure to post them below for me. I'd love to hear what you have to say, uh, whether you like these Monday Minutes or not, whether you want to see a specific topic covered, post it in the comments below here on YouTube or in the blog at emsofficehours.com. I'd love to hear what you have to say and what your, your thoughts are on this topic as well. What do you do when you have a patient that's with mental status and you're not quite sure if they're diabetic or if there's something else going on? What do you do with those patients? Let me know below, guys, in the notes. Um, until next week, guys, as always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and Monday Minutes. Stay safe.